pleased to be joined by Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson here. They're in town to call the Thunder and the Timberwolves tomorrow afternoon. Jeff, I'll start with you. I know you've seen Zion Williamson in the phenomenon. Did you build an NBA franchise around Zion Williamson? Well, I think that's too early to say. I think certainly defensively, he has the chance to be elite. Offensively, it'll all depend on how his shooting progresses, how his ball handling progresses, but I love the way he conducted himself as an athlete, as a competitor, and certainly had a wonderful year. And I don't think that's a slider on Zion Williams. I think his game still has a lot of ways to evolve because we talk about it. It's like you haven't really seen him shoot the mid-range game. You haven't really shown him, like, you know, is he going to be a pick him? Can he come off down screens? Can he come off curls? Can he add those different dimensions to his game is going to be the big question. Oh, to me, it is about adding those things. You think about it when it mattered most down the stretch. They need a basket. They put the ball in Barrett's hands as opposed to Zion Williamson. So the adjustment for him is going to be improving on the perimeter. Where would you play him? I mean, like right now, his game, because that's his game in this moment in time is who he is. Where would you play him as an NBA coach where he could be successful? Well, to me, he's going to be on that front line with the ability to rebound and push the basketball. Also, you make him better by daily working on his pick and roll skills, his isolation skills. He already has the ability to overpower you on the block. Yeah, I don't think you worry as much about where because he can guard any position. I think the thing that I'm interested in is when he goes into the NBA, will they post him uh, and use that power uh, and I'll be interested to see because the post game obviously is being devalued right now. But I think against mismatches with all the switching, he is going to be lethal down there if he gets his feel against the smaller players. I, I think he's a power forward from day one, and I think he's going to be excellent. Jeff, I got a question for you on, on the draft. But first, wanted to say thank you to you for what you did for USA Basketball. Like when when the, U, when the U.S. wins a gold medal in the next Olympics, a big reason why is going to be the job you did to get them there. So thank you for that. Uh, but just wanted to add, like, if you're drafting one in this, do you give any thought at all to John Morant versus Zion Williamson, or is it Zion all the way? Well, I have to say, I haven't seen John Morant uh, nearly as much as you guys, uh, but he is out. What I did see, he was outstanding. And I think to say it's a no-brainer, you don't even do the study or even – think or question what you would do, that would be irresponsible. So certainly, if you're a point guard uh, needy team like Phoenix, to say I wouldn't even consider him, I think would be irresponsible. To me, I'm bringing them in. I'm bringing both guys in, working them out individually. Moran has the ability in this league where you need a scoring point guard out of pick and roll and also isolations. So I wouldn't say 100% it's Zion and nobody else. He's in the discussion. Yeah, but in today's game, is a point guard, a great point guard more valuable? He is more yeah. valuable, which we see with the best teams in this league. They have the ability to put the ball in that guy's hands, and he makes plays. Mike Smith said on Get Up, uh, and at first when I heard it, I was like, there's, there's no way. But then I started to think about it. It actually is feasible with the way the, the, way, the, way the game is going. Could Zion Williamson be the new five in the NBA? You look at Julius Randle. And yeah. He's, he's that, uh, a skilled guy that can defend fives, defend stretch fours, switch every pick and roll action. He certainly is a guy that can be that. No. You guys are nuts. He's like 6'8". No. No, not he's now. 6'6". Have you watched the league? 285. I have. I've watched the centers <laughs> in this league. Steven Adams, he's going to block out. He's going to go guard Carl Anthony Towns. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> but I was also the moron who was about to trade LeBron two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> you did say they weren't going to make the playoffs. I did do that, yeah. And when you thank me, Jay, I appreciate that, but I thought you were thanking me for getting Mark out of California. <laughs> <laughs> he has been outside of California all year, so gosh. No, no can I say something? No, I, ec I echo what you said. There is nobody in the world dead or alive that could have done the job this man did with USA Basketball. Yeah, I'm extremely proud of him. Okay. And speaking it's of true. USA Basketball, how about R.J. Barrett? Do you guys see ways his game could become better? Or maybe it's, is he the third pick in the draft, or maybe he's the second pick in the draft? To me right now, he's the third pick. Uh, and he's got to, again, improve on his ability to shoot the basketball, play out of pick and roll, continue to uh, get better and better on the perimeter. Uh, the guy is an outstanding defender, has great size. But to me, I can't uh, overlook Morant and what he does from the point guard position. So Barrett would be the third. And, I, and, and the one thing I remember Barrett, and I forget, it, it was at an under-18 game. Yeah. I was watching when uh, Canada beat uh, US. the U.S. He was incredible yeah, in that 38. game. 
and uh, totally dominant. And I think he's had a really good year. Unfortunately, he's been in the shadow uh, of a great player, but that doesn't mean he can't develop into something really, really special. And they've both handled that aspect of it extraordinarily well, which speaks to their maturity. Final four here. I know you guys are locked in on the NBA. You got a pick? Well, I, I one team got here from my final four, you know, my bracket was yeah. Texas Tech. Um, <laughs> But I'm going with Virginia. I think Virginia, at the end of the day, is going to get enough stops to win it. And two of my teams made it, which is Michigan State and Virginia. I'm going to go against him. I'm going to say Auburn is going to win it all. Oh, wow. wow. War Eagle. Okay. You, you, had, you had some experience. You remember, what was it like for you? When it, you was in, it, it was absolutely incredible. I was a sophomore playing with, obviously, great players and Chris Mullen, Walter Berry. Hall of Fame coach and Luke Honasek, it was the time of my life. How, oh, how about Reese Davis on. going past Nazareth College there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is totally <laughs> inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we you got to the final eight and lost at home, if you can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I was on Rick Pitino's 1987 staff that got to the final four riding Billy Donovan's coattails. Mm -hmm. We lost to Syracuse, but anyway, it was great. Hey, Reese, you know, he's the only guy in the history of life that has transferred from Yale for lack of playing time. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to tell you. I had to go Juco. I was a Juco guy. <laughs> one, of his, uh, one of his final four teams has Matt Mooney, who started at Air Force, yeah. went to South Dakota, yeah. now Texas Tech. Looked a lot like your resume. <laughs> <laughs> You're all over the place, too, man. <laughs> Jeff and Mark will be on the call for the Thunder and the Timberwolves tomorrow, 3.30 <laughs> Eastern time on ABC. Guys, always great to see you. Thanks Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Jeff and Gundy Absolutely. and Mark Jackson.